Okay, so let, let's look at this graph, all right? So on the bottom axis, I have distance from the center of the Earth, okay? So here's this strange rock that we're on, center of the Earth, boom, coming out like this. And these are all like two, 10 to the 6, 3 times 10 to the 6, 6 times 10 to the 6, 9, 12, that type of thing, okay? So the radius of the Earth itself is 6.3713 times 10 to the 6. So we're going to start this graph here because inside the Earth, it doesn't really make any sense to talk about gravitational acceleration because this little g is going to be how fast something's going to accelerate when you drop it. If you're inside the Earth, it really doesn't make sense to talk about that. So this graph is only going to start right here, 6.3713 times 10 to the 6 meters. So you're going to go from here up to this point. So this is where this graph is going to start. So if you're standing here at the Earth, okay, if you're standing here at the center of the Earth, and you drop any object, okay, a marble, a squirrel, an elephant, doesn't make any difference. The only thing that's going to affect little g, listen to me, the only thing that affects little g are two things. The mass of the earth and how far you are from the center of the earth. That's it. So if you're at the radius of the earth, you're standing here at the radius of the earth, and you're right there, 6.3713 times 10 to the 6, that's going to have an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, notice that I did not include the mass of what's being dropped. It doesn't matter, okay? Me, Carson, Connor, doesn't make any difference. All of us are going to end up with the same acceleration because just like Jaden, we all drop out of the equation. No offense, this might hurt some of your egos, but your mass doesn't matter in terms of calculating acceleration. Does, does, it, does it impact force? Yes, but it does not impact acceleration. Now, so if you're on the surface of the Earth, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. Now we're going to go above the surface of the Earth, okay? We're going to start to go from here out. So we're going to go further and further and further and further from the center of the Earth. So what's going to happen to that graph? It's going to do one of three things. It's going to curve up, meaning that G is going to get bigger. It's just going to be a horizontal line, meaning that little g stays the same because gravity doesn't change. Or it's going to curve downward. So it's either going to go up, horizontal line, or curve down. Tyler, what's it going to do? Wait, wait, you, you asked the question again. Sorry. Okay. So we've got this equation, little g equals big G mass of the earth over r squared. Okay. So if I'm at the surface of the earth, okay, I'm right here. 6.3713 times 10 to the 6 meters, that, had a, that has a corresponding acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Cool with that. Okay? Now, I'm going to go in a rocket ship, and I'm going to begin to go further from the surface of the Earth. So as that rocket ship gets further and further from the center of the Earth, what's going to happen to the value of little g? It's either going to increase, decrease, or stay the same? It'll decrease. You're right. Why are you right? Well, because um, well, the distance is increasing. And, that has... and but what's staying? You're right. But what more importantly, or just as importantly, what's staying the same? Am I changing the universal gravitational constant? No. Am I changing the mass of the Earth? No. No. Okay? So when you look at this equation, this is why little g is not a constant. Okay? It changes depending upon where you are, even on the surface of the Earth itself. So if you look at this, I'm not going to change the universal gravitational constant. 
That's why we call it the universal gravitational constant, because it doesn't change, okay? As I go further from the Earth, I'm not going to change the mass of the Earth. That's a fixed value. Okay, well, that's simple, right? So the only thing that's going to happen is R. So if I plug in, if you want, if you don't believe me, you can do this. If you plug in big G, the mass of the Earth, and divide it by the radius of the Earth squared, 6.3713 times 10 to the 6 meters squared, you're going to get 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, that's what you're going to get, 9.8 meters per second squared. So it goes back to exactly what Tyler said. If as this radius gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, I'm going to be dividing by a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger number. Okay? So what's going to happen to that value of little g? It's going to get small. So as you go further and further from the center of the earth, g is going to become less and less and less. Okay? Now, here's one misconception I want to get rid of. So when you look at astronauts as they orbit the Earth, the International Space Station, whatever, you'll see them floating around. And they go, oh, they're in zero G, okay? And, and I don't want you to have this perception that if you're floating around in the, in the International Space Station, oh, you're out of the Earth's gravitational field. No, that's bad, okay? Because if you're in a spaceship orbiting around the Earth, okay, if you're in zero gravity, you're going to go flying off in a straight line. The last thing you want to hear, if you're an astronaut, they call you up and go, hey, we got bad news, okay? For some reason, like the gravity switch got turned off, we're not sure why, we don't have gravity anymore, okay? At that point, panic, okay? Panic fast, because without gravity, you turn into a projectile, and you're going to go off in a straight line tangent to that circle. You want to be accelerated towards the Earth. You want to be in the gravitational field. But what happens is that you are just in a state of free fall, which we'll get into that concept in just a little bit. So what happens when something's in orbit, you're just continuously falling around the Earth. On a relative scale, if this was the size of the Earth, like the International Space Station orbits about a half inch above the surface of the Earth. All we're doing is we are above our atmosphere. Okay, there's nothing magic about space. If we didn't have an atmosphere, you, we could, you could literally make satellites orbit just, they just have to be high enough to clear the mountain ranges. Okay, that's all they'd have to be. Okay, there's nothing magic about space. We just have to get outside of our atmosphere. So, here's what I want you to realize. Little g changes based upon how far you are from the center of the earth. So the farther you get from the center of the Earth, the smaller little g becomes. So little g is at its maximum right when you're standing at the surface of the Earth. Now, it's an odd thing about our Earth. Well, in Kansas, this isn't so much, but everybody says, oh, man, Earth is like, you know, it's got mountains and it's got valleys, it's got the Grand Canyon, you know, we have the Flint Hills. Ooh, that's exciting. Okay? But if you, if you were to take the Earth and compress it down to like a, a cue ball on a relative scale, it would be the absolute smoothest cue ball that's ever been manufactured in the entire world, okay? We, if you look at this, yo, we have some mountains and things, like that, but relatively speaking, our Earth is actually very, 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 very flat. Like literally, if you compress the Earth to a cue ball, it would be the smoothest surface on relative scale manufactured in the history of the universe. It's like, it, it looks lumpy, but in reality, on a relative scale, it's actually very, 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 very smooth. But what that means, though, is that we have tiny variations in the value of little g. So if you go to Denver, or if you go to the top of Mount Everest, g is actually a little bit less than it is right here. This is why for gravitational acceleration, we use little g, because that changes, as opposed to big g, which is a constant. Now, let's talk about when, when something is, is in orbit. So, imagine this. This is not the scale, but here's what I want. Here's this rock that we're on, and here's this mountain. Okay, so you're on top of this mountain. And not only are you on top of the mountain, you happen to have with you a cannon. Okay, that can oddly enough fire a cannonball. That's what cannons do, they fire cannonballs. 
Okay, it's a radical concept. Right. So I'm going to fire a cannon out from this cannon sitting on top of a mountain. And I'm going to fire it, and, the, and that cannonball is going to go something like this. Okay, so that's going to, just going to go whoop. Okay. Now, you go, okay, well, that was cool, but let, let's, let's fire it a little bit faster. Let's put even more gunpowder in it. Okay. So, it's, so the cannonball is going to fly, fly out a little bit faster. Okay. So now it's going to go something like this. Okay. It's cool, right? Well, if that's good, more cannon powder would be even better. Okay. I'm going to fire it like this. Okay. And then it's going to land here. So if I fire it fast enough, what's the cannonball going to do? Yeah, it's going to fall all the way around like this as they hit the back of the cannon. Okay, now imagine this. So here I've got, uh, this, is this, okay, so I've got this rubber ball, right? So imagine I throw it and it goes like this, and I throw it faster, and then it's going to go out like this. So the ultimate physics demonstration that I could do for you, the, the ultimate physics demonstration, is that, okay, class, we're going to go outside, and I'm going to throw this ball really, 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 really fast. And I'm going to throw it fast enough that it's in orbit. And you do the math later, it takes about an hour and a half for things in close to the Earth to go one, all, one lap all the way around. So that would be the ultimate physics demo. Or go outside and throw this thing, right? And let's say I, I throw it at 1030. I say, okay, class, come back at noon. So an hour and a half later, we're going to go back outside. And I'm going to put my hand up and I'm going to catch that ball as it's completed one orbit all the way around the Earth. Okay? And it will take about an hour and a half, about 90 minutes. So here's why, and if you go, well, how fast does that have to be going? That's a good, legitimate question. So because we're on a rock and the earth is curved, you know I can't tell the earth is curved in your normal day-to-day -day experience, okay? You're, you, you think the earth is pretty much flat, especially in Kansas. Oh, it's flat. Okay, great. It's flat. But in reality, the earth is curved. But the analogy is, is if you are... If, you're, if I take an ant and I put an ant on the surface of this bowling ball, the ant's going to, from his perspective, he's going to look at this and go, oh, that bowling ball is flat because he can't see far enough to see that it's curved. So the same thing with us. We look at our day-to-day -day existence. We think, what's the earth like, flat? Okay, we don't see the curvature of the earth. Right? But it is, we just don't know it. So here's your geometric fact, okay? So for every, if you look at the surface of the Earth, for every eight kilometers that you go, and eight kilometers is about five miles, okay? If you go eight kilometers, the Earth curves out from underneath you 4.9 meters, which is about twice the height of the ceiling. And you go, okay, what's the significance of 4.9 meters? Well, the significance of the 4.9 4 meters comes from this equation. The distance equals 1 half at squared plus v naught time. So if I drop this thing, okay, and I let it fall, just drop it. Oh, my initial velocity is zero. And if I let it fall for exactly one second under an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, so if I take 1 squared times 9.8 and I take half of that, I get 4.9 meters. So a dropped object at the surface of the Earth, if you let it fall for exactly one second, it will fall 4.9 meters, which is about twice the height of the ceiling. So this is the magic number. So what that means is if you can get an object traveling at 8 kilometers per second, which is 8,000 meters per second, as it travels that distance, the Earth is going to curve out from underneath you 4.9 meters. So you're traveling in an arc, okay? You throw the ball, it's going to travel in an arc. 
Okay, following in an arc. For every eight kilometers that you go out this way, it falls out from underneath you 4.9 meters. So this is why if you're going to put something in orbit, it has to be going, it has to be going so fast because of the fact that you have to be going about five miles per second. Now, to give you some perspective on how fast that is, imagine we're up here at 53rd and Rock Road, okay? And I want to throw this steel ball fast enough that it goes into orbit, okay? So this is how fast it would have to go. I'm at 50, I'm up here at 53rd and Mays Road. I, it needs to travel about five miles per second. So in one second, I would start up here at 53rd. Then it would go to 45th, 37th, 29th, 21st, 13th Street. So it would, I would have to throw it fast enough so that if I'm at 53rd and Rock Road, it's going to end up at 13th Street one second later. Okay? Now, if I could get, get it going that fast, that ball will be in orbit around the Earth because that's how much the Earth. So if you go from 53rd, the Earth is flat, but it looks it's curved, but it looks flat. So between 53rd and Mays Road and 13th and Mays Road, if you could like shoot a laser out, the Earth curls out from underneath you about twice the height of the ceiling. Okay, and that's assuming a perfectly spherical object. So that's what happens when you put things in orbit. So things in orbit are not in orbit because they're in zero gravity. They're in orbit because the Earth is just curving out from underneath them as they fall towards the Earth. Okay. <sighs> now, let's say that we want to put Jaden into orbit. Okay? So now that we know kind of what happens in, in orbit. So here's the Earth. And here's Jaden. Okay, we'll give you some curly hair, Jaden. And uh, we're going to put Jaden in orbit. So, Jaden, since you're in orbit, you want to calculate how fast you're going or how long it's going to take for you to orbit the Earth. Which one do you want to do first? Time. Time. Okay. So, we're going to put Jaden in orbit. And we're going to put Jaden in an orbit that's 120 kilometers above the surface of the earth okay now 120 kilometers is about uh 60 miles okay 60 miles is kind of the distance from here to like emporia okay roughly so if you've ever driven to kansas city you kind of visualize how far that is okay so from here to emporia is about 60 miles so that's about how high Jaden would be above the earth so here's going to be the main idea, is that Jaden's going to be falling around in a circle. So Jaden, are you going to be undergoing centripetal acceleration? Yes. Yes, because you're not traveling in a line, you're traveling in a circle, right? So to make that happen, it's going to require a force. And what's the only, Jaden, what's the only force available to make you travel in a circle? Gravity. Gravity. Okay, this is our main idea. Okay, this is the main point. So the gravitational force between Jaden and the Earth is going to equal the centripetal force acting on Jaden. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's the main idea. So to calculate the gravitational force between Jaden and the Earth, we're going to use big G, the mass of Jaden, Mass of the Earth divided by R squared. Now, listen to me, 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 listen to me. That R, there's two things you have to know about that R. First off, that R has to be in meters, or none of the units work out. You, as soon as you see anything that involves big G, and big G, remember, is Newton's meters squared over kilogram squared, okay? So as soon, as soon as you see something involving big G, you have to work in the MKS system. The meters, the distance has to be in meters. The mass has to be in kilograms. Time has to be in seconds, okay? 
If you're now, if you're using Kepler's third law, which is just which is just a ratio, cool. You can use hours and hours, astronomical units, astronomical units, okay? Days, years, doesn't make any difference because it's just a ratio. But, 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 listen to me. Little bells and whistles need to go off inside your head. You go, oh, I'm using big G. Oh, man, I've got to, I've got to be in the MKS system, okay? So you have to be in the MKS system. If you screw up a problem, it's because I gave you a period in days and you left it in days. Or I gave you a distance in kilometers and you left it in kilometers. Okay? Now, so this radius has to be in meters. The other thing that has to happen, because we're treating Jaden as a point mass, that means we're going to treat the Earth as a point mass. So we're going to treat the Earth as crunched down into one single point. So that radius, there's two things. It has to be in meters, and it has to be measured from the center of the Earth. Okay? It is not the distance above the Earth, okay, because we're treating the Earth as a point mass. So any radius has to be from the center of the Earth, okay? So right away, there's two things that I have to do with this. One, I have to convert the kilometers into meters. So Peyton, am I going to multiply by 1,000 or divide by 1,000? Let's think this through. If I divide by 1,000, I'm going to get 0.12 meters. Okay? 0.12 meters is about the length of my hand. So do we really... Do you, does this make sense to say Jaden's in orbit the length of my hand above the earth? Mm -hmm. No. So let's do what? Multiply. Let's multiply by a thousand. That's going to be a lot better. Because one kilometer is a thousand meters. Okay? So I'm going to get 120,000 meters. Now, that is not Jaden's radius. Okay? There's not a radius. I have to add in the radius of the Earth. Okay? So here's, the, I'm, I'm not, no, I'll, I'll get this number. I don't care about it right now. We'll get back to your radius in just a second. Okay? Now, so I've got mass of Jaden, mass of the Earth, that radius measure from the center of the Earth to wherever Jaden is. Cool with that. Now, that has to equal the centripetal force acting on Jaden, because without that centripetal force, Jaden, love you to death, Jaden turns into a projectile, and she's going to go off in a straight line tangent to the circle, never to be seen from again, and it's going to be a sad day. Okay? So let's assume that there is a centripetal force acting on her that's equal to the gravitational force. So here's what we're going to do, friends. We're going to do a little bit of algebraic voodoo. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this. we got... Big G, mass of Jaden, mass of the Earth over, it's a pirate thing, R squared, okay? Now, that's going to equal the centripetal force acting on Jaden, and I'm going to use, because of the fact that I want to talk about time, because Jaden said she wanted to figure out, oh, how long is that going to take? That's a valid question. So I'm going to use the value of centripetal force that involves time, which is going to be mass 4 pi squared R, over t squared. Now, that mass, is he? Is that the mass of Jaden? Or is that, so is that the mass of Jaden that she's orbiting? Or is that the mass of the Earth? It is. Why? Why isn't it the mass of the Earth? All I know is that the mass of the Earth doesn't cancel out and Jaden does. Okay, so think back when y'all did the rubber stopper lab and you swung that rubber stopper around. Did you, you use the mass of the stopper? Because that's what was going around in the circle. So Jaden is going around in a circle. So we're going to use Jaden's mass. The mass of the Earth isn't moving, okay? It is, but it's moving around the sun, okay? But we're just going to focus on Jaden. So this is going to be the mass of Jaden. Now, again, nothing personal. Jaden, I don't want you to think, oh, man, Mr. Burkamp hates me. 
he's going to make me cancel out of the equation. No, okay? It would happen to anybody. It would happen to me, okay? So here's what's going to be important. Mass of Jaden drops out of the equation, okay? So every problem I'm going to give you, I promise you, I am never going to give you the mass of the spaceship, the mass of the satellite, the mass of Jaden, whatever it is. I am never going to give you the mass of that object. Do you know why? Doesn't matter. Can't plug it into the equation if you try. Does not matter. Now, does it impact the amount of force acts on it? Yeah, it does. But it doesn't affect anything else. So, Jaden, no offense, but you've dropped out of this equation. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to have big G, mass of the Earth, T squared, equals 4 pi squared. Now, this is, a fav this is the pirate's favorite equation because I'm going to take R squared times R, and we're going to get R cubed, okay? So this is, this is the pirate's favorite equation. Now, this is what I would call the Swiss Army Knife equation for planetary motion. And a Swiss Army knife, if you don't know what that is, a Swiss Army knife has like all these little tools on it. It's got like a pair of tweezers and a, you know, a pair of scissors and a blade and a saw and a small nuclear reactor. Okay, maybe not that. But so a Swiss Army knife has all these cool little gadgets on it. You can do anything with it, okay? So this is the Swiss Army knife equation. So the beauty of this equation is you can do so many things with it. You can solve for the mass of what you're orbiting. So we're going to use this, for example, to find the mass of Saturn, for example. So if you know the information about a moon that's orbiting Saturn, you can figure out, if you know the radius and you know the period of that moon, you can figure the mass of Saturn. I could find the mass of the Earth. Hey, what's the mass of the Earth? Oh, I don't know. i got a moon. Okay. Moon's orbiting around the the sun at orbiting around our Earth. So if I know the radius of the moon orbit, and I know that it takes about 29 days, I can solve for the mass of the Earth. I can solve for period, okay? I want to figure out how long it's going to take Jaden to go around the Earth. Oh, I can solve this for T. I can solve for R. If I said, oh, okay, hey, one of the problems you're going to do, we're going to talk about what's called a geosynchronous orbit. Geosynchronous orbits of satellites orbit the Earth with a period of 24 hours. What that means is that if you have a geosynchronous orbit like we use for GPS systems, okay, you, we have this parking lot of, sa of satellites that are out here above the Earth, and they are spinning at the same rate that the Earth is. Okay, so what that means is that above us, and don't flip out the... Okay? It's okay. Without it, your GPS system on your phone doesn't work. And God forbid you'd have to, like, lead a map, like the old-style paper map. It's like, <gasps> they used to have paper maps. Yes. Okay? Stunning as that may be. So what that means is that we have these satellites that are above the Earth, and as the Earth spins, <coughs> these satellites stay at that same point above the Earth all the time. So that allows us to triangulate our data, and then we know exactly where we are. So th those satellites allow us to do that. So if you know, hey, I want a satellite of 24 hours that for, stays above the Earth all the time, we know the mass of the Earth, we can figure out, oh, what does that radius have to be? So this is what's on your equation sheet, okay? This, just like this. But you need to be able to solve that thing very easily for mass, radius, period. Okay, that's what you need to be able to do. So, Jaden said, oh, Mr. Burkamp, let's talk about how long it's going to take. Well, let's talk about that. So, I want to get T by itself. Jaden, so since you started down this road, how am I going to get T by itself? Divide by the GVW. Fantastic. I want to divide by big G and the mass of the Earth. Then what am I going to do? No, 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 no. I, I got T squared. Huh? I'm going to take the square root of all this. So t is going to equal the square root of 4 pi squared r cubed big G mass of the Earth. Now, sometimes you'll see this written where they'll pull out that 4 pi squared. Because what's the square root of 4 pi squared? 
do not make this difficult. What's the square root of 4 pi squared? 2 pi. So sometimes you'll see this written as 2 pi times the square root of r cubed, big G, massive. It's the same thing. I don't care what you want to do. If you want to put that 4 pi squared underneath the radical, cool. If you want to pull that out and write it as 2 pi, cool, and knock yourself out, don't care. Okay? Now, let's talk numbers. Now, Jaden, we said, was 120 kilometers above the Earth, which Peyton said, oh, we need to multiply by 1,000 to get 120,000 meters. So that is not the radius. I have to add that to the Earth. Now, so do not round when you do this calculation. When you take that radius and you add it to the Earth, do not round it. Okay, you keep all those digits and you round when you get to the end. So somebody take 120,000 and add that to the radius of the earth and let me know what you get. So take that plus 6.3713 times 10 to the 6th. Uh, 6,400,000. No, 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 scientific notation. Scientific oh, notation. Yeah. Um, six point. Four nine one E. What is that? Six. Yep. To the sixth. Now that's going to get cubed, and then I'm going to divide that by big G. Five point nine four times six point six seven times seven to the negative eleven for the units meters squared. Okay, now, step away from the calculators, okay? Step away from the calculators. All I want to do is get an order of magnitude, okay? That's it. I just want an order of magnitude. So, Connor, I take 10 to the 6 and I'm going to cube that. What am I going to get? So, up on top, I have 10 to the 18th, Okay. Now, down below, I have 10 to the 24th times 10 to the negative 11th. That gives me 10 to the 13th. I take 18 minus 13. I get like 10 to the 5th. I take the square root of that. Trust me on this one. You're going to get 10 to the 3rd. Okay? So listen to me, 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 listen to me. When you have objects in near-Earth orbit, Okay, which is true of the Earth, and it's also true of the Moon. The orbital period in seconds should be something times 10 to the third. Okay? This is in seconds. That isn't in hours. That is not days, years, centuries. No. In seconds. There is no exceptions to this whatsoever. So when you calculate an orbital period of anything orbiting the Earth, it sh the order of magnitude should be something times 10 to the third. If you don't get that, you have done something wrong. It isn't like I'm going to tell you this, like, oh, I'm going to trick him up on the test and put 10 to the fifth. No, okay? Every orbital period you're going to calculate in near-Earth orbit or near-Earth orbit of the moon is going to be something times 10 to the third. Promise you. Okay, now, Carson's gone, our usual go-to calculator person. So somebody crunch the numbers on this and let me know exactly what you get. And again, make sure you can do this on your calculator. Do not go home Monday night when you have this big assignment and realize, well, I don't know how to run my calculator. Okay? Anybody get an answer? Bailey, what'd you get? 5.2 What'd you get? 5 point what? 5.0 times 10 to the 5.0 times 10 to the what? Third seconds. Okay, seems reasonable. Now, Bailey, do us a favor. Take that and divide that by 60 so we get an idea of minutes. Um, 86.7. 86 86.7 minutes, about 90 minutes, about an hour and a half. So what that means is that, these are minutes. So what that means, if, if we can put Jaden in orbit, every about hour and a half, She's going to make one lap around the Earth. So that's how long it's going to take her to go around, is about an hour and a half. And that's like the, like the International Space Station. 
that's about how long it takes, about an hour and a half, okay, to go one time around the Earth. So what that's cool, though, is that every hour and a half, you're going to see a sunrise. Every hour and a half, you're going to see a sunset. So if you like sunrises and sunsets, go into space, okay? You get a sunrise every hour and a half. You get a sunset every hour and a half because you're going that fast as it orbits around it. Now, here's one of the things I want to make you do on the test. You mark my words, okay? One of the things I want to make you do. I'm going to give you that equation. 2 pi times the square root of r cubed big G max. And I'm going to take you do dimensional analysis to prove that you get seconds. Okay, I promise you, this, I, this is one equation I can choose from. And I'm going to say, prove that you get seconds. So I'm going to work this one so you can see this process. I'm not going to worry about 2 pi because 2 pi doesn't have any units. So I have the radius. Now, what does that radius have to be in? Meters, kilometers, astronomical units. Meters. So that's going to be meters, but that's going to get cubed. Okay, so up on top, i got meters cubed. Now I have big G. Big G is listed on your equation sheet. Okay, the units for big G are newtons, meters squared over kilogram squared. It's on your equation sheet. You don't have to memorize it. I have it listed. Okay. Then I'm going to multiply that by mass, which is not the mass of Jaden. That's the mass of the Earth, so I'm going to put that as kilograms. So at this point, I'm going to simplify this. I got kilograms, and I got kilograms squared down below, so that's going to cancel out one of my kilograms. Okay, so now I just have kilograms down below. I got meters cubed divided by meters squared, so those are going to go away, and I'm left with meters. So I'm going to regroup. So I have meters over newtons over kilograms. So this is what I have left after my initial cancellation of my units. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the most important thing that you have to do. What's another, instead of newtons, what's another way of writing newtons? Kilograms, meters per. So that's the most important substitution that you have to do. So now I'm going to have meters, and then I'm going to have kilograms, meters per second squared, all over kilograms. Okay? So I took newtons, and I put that in there for the newtons. Ah, cool. Now, now the meters are going to cancel out. The kilograms are going to cancel out. And what I have left with is 1 over, one over second squared. Guess what? The second squareds are going to flip up. I'm going to have the square root of second <coughs> squared, otherwise known as seconds. Okay? So I promise you, on the test, you've got to be able to take an equation like this, do dimensional analysis, and prove that you get seconds. And the whole key to this is when you have the newtons and you put in the kilograms, meters per second squared. Okay, I'm done. Remember tomorrow... You're going to report directly to second block. We will not meet at all tomorrow. Monday, we'll work through some examples on how to do this. You've got a big assignment on, on Monday. Uh, and then the test, we'll see, is probably going to be on probably Wednesday of next week, Wednesday or Thursday. I'll have to see how the schedule plays out. Okay, But there, there will be a big test of planetary motion and centripetal motion middle of next week. Okay? All right. Can you stop that, please, dude? Yes.